Hey everyone, it's Ryan Fowler with Mind Chrysalis here with my good friend uh, Ryan. We have a client interview for you, but uh, I've been looking forward to this interview with Ryan. I've worked with Ryan. I've worked with you a fair amount, man. And um, welcome to the show. How yeah, you doing? Well, it's, first off, it's good to be here. I've never appeared on the show yet, which is kind of crazy. But... Yeah, you're the guest of honor, baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, um, Ryan, I'll let you share most of your background, but the, the thing I like about Ryan is, um, you know, I had a lot of trauma growing up. Ryan had a lot of trauma, maybe even more than me. Um, you've made a lot of progress. Um, you're one of those cases where you had a lot of severe trauma and um, you still haven't fixed it all, but you've fixed a lot. So thank you, Ryan, for having the courage today to, um, you know, put your story on YouTube and share and encourage others and so sharing and and so um tell us a little bit about yourself and why you wanted to you know do some sessions with me well i first saw one of your webinars in the, the masculine empowerment network back in the day okay. a couple of yeah. years ago something like that um and that was a real light bulb moment for me because I knew that there was always something, I hate to say it this way, but I knew there was something wrong with me, like deep down. Yeah. I knew there was something, something weird going on in my core. And I, I have I that t-shirt too. Yeah. And so, you know, like when I saw you talk about when you brought up the first time I saw the, you know, the five and all that, and I knew like, man, I've got to shift five traumas. Like yeah. Yeah. So I knew that that's, that was a huge piece of the puzzle right away. Um, now, I admit that I really procrastinated on actually booking the session and going forward with it. It took me about a year to actually get get moving. Um, that happens had, all the time, too. Not everyone, but a lot of people, trust me. <laughs> well, and part of that is because I had a lot of, I had so, well, as you know, I had so many layers of bad programming. And I had a lot of shit around asking for help, you know, going to people, being vulnerable, telling them. Mm -hmm. The reality of what's going on with me is that I had a lot of stuff and I, I was scared to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So that was a big part of it. Um, so after I, a year, what finally made you pull the trigger? I think it was when I got my hands on one of your audios. Uh, you okay. shared it with us in the inner game healing. Self-hypnosis audio, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so I tried that. And right away, I noticed, like, man, there's really something to this. And so I think that I used, the, I, I used that audio a lot. Like I was doing it twice a day for quite a while. And now, what I didn't made know. you think there's something to it? I remember the first time I used it, I kind of felt like a certain amount of a weight lifted. Nice. And, and the next day yeah, I was I able to do more. more. Like I just, I don't know. I just had a little, just a little bit more energy the next day. I, awesome. Okay. You know, I could do the damn dishes for a change, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, I used that for a while. And even with that, I did, I cleared a good amount with just that, but I didn't, I didn't really know how to use it very well. It's a problem. So eventually like I got into more complex problems and I had to go to you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, for those of us, um, for those of you listening, um, you know, to this interview, uh, we now have uh, free self-hypnosis training, like training videos with the self-hypnosis audio you can use. And there's worksheets. So you know how to use it correctly. And you can watch that over and over again. It's the basics, but it can be very powerful and just go right there. School.com forward slash mind personally dash 7138. Go there, submit a membership request. It's really easy and then you get approved and then you're in. And then you can start doing this with actually even more training than, um, than, than you started out with. But with that said, your trauma was pretty severe. And, and honestly, most people should get one session and then use self-hypnosis to fix the rest. Some people are gonna need more. and um, you know, like, honestly, like 90% of my clients need one to three. That's it. But some people need more. So how how were you struggling before you started the self-hypnosis? What were you struggling with exactly? Oh, man, so much would be hard to say, right? I mean, I struggled with everything, man. I struggled with almost everything. I was a wreck. Like, I was. and I. You said, like, you're, it's hard for you to function even. Yeah, I couldn't. I got to the point where I was pretty What was that like? Well, I felt like I was just stuck. I was at a standstill. I couldn't do anything. Like I just didn't, uh, I got to the point where I just had so many layers of, of bad programming that I just, 
I just, Could, every, everything was difficult. I got resistance mm -hmm. with everything. Like even the ba most basic things in life. What about like a day-to-day -day job or going on a date, like either of those? I could work a day-to-day -day job. Um, I would have a lot of stuff attached to it. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes I'd go, I'd go very long periods without working. I went a very long time without working for a while. And when it came to dates and stuff like that, like, no, I didn't do that at all. I had way too much stuff around that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, man, I know all, all about insecurities and dating, you know, um, I've cleared it. But I've been through all that too. So, um, why why would you go for? It sounds like months at a time without working. What was that about? Well, I I, I guess I just felt stuck. Like I would I would just subconsciously I'd always want to seek a comfort zone. I guess like gotcha. It's just a really comfort zone. Like you you know people with that kind of trauma don't don't venture out very easily it feels like a risk to them right so just going outside felt like a risk to you sometimes would i wouldn't you, would you I put wouldn't, that differently well i mean i wouldn't quite say like just stepping out the door felt like a risk mm -hmm. but doing anything anything where i could have the chance of like rejection or judgment felt like a risk right yeah yeah okay so totally yeah. get it cool so um or that wasn't cool but you did the self-hypnosis. Um, sounds like that helped you, but then you decided you're going to do a full session. So um, we've done at this point, I think three sessions in total. Is that right? Yeah. Three full sessions. Yeah. And also uh, Ryan, I, um, I, I did a weekly group training with Ryan. So he's had um, several like 30 minute consults and then some weekly group stuff too, where I was teaching you how to use self-hypnosis and um did you notice um, like a big difference after the first session or was it subtle or didn't notice the first, but notice the second? What was that like for you? Um, well, after the first session, I, I did notice a difference. Actually, I remember like the later that day and the next day, I felt great. I felt like I was, you know, I, I just felt so, so much more inner power and stuff like that. Unfortunately, nice though it didn't really last because then, well, as you know, you remove one big thing and then another thing comes to the forefront, right? Yeah, we call it layers of the onion. So do you feel yeah. we permanently remove something or is just big trauma underneath? Is that what you're saying? In the first session? Yeah, I think we permanently removed removed a couple things. Um, okay. But you had you you had some other stuff still there. I had a ton of other stuff, though. Gotcha. I had a ton. Okay. And, and so what's your recovery journey been, been like? Um, first session we still had a ton so that starts emerging um what was your recovery like just from this you did self-hypnosis first session and then what happened since uh what's happened since then and what's that been like um recovering improving since the first session uh well yeah. i so we did the first session um then I, yeah, I did, I did a lot of self hypnosis in, in between. We had a second session. I think it was like a month mm -hmm. after. Yeah. So between those, we removed a lot. Um, and I was doing better, but it still wasn't enough. I still had so mm -hmm. many different layers of stuff. Um, yeah. And there was a period where I got kind of, I, I was doing the self hypnosis a lot, but I got kind of lazy with it. Um, and I think it's probably because I, I I've done that too. That's yeah. Normal. And, but and you I came think, back to as long as you keep coming back but yeah 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 and so then i ended up coming back like full force uh with the program and i mean i think the bulk of what i've removed probably has been through self-hypnosis which i would say is a necessity for people like us yeah so if you have very severe trauma and, and honestly yours was you know in my humble opinion you know again i'm not a medical practitioner i just teach people how to let go of stuff that doesn't help them unconditionally love themselves, believe in their value. That really ha helps just handle so many things. Um, so, but for people uh, like you, like me, who've had severe trauma, a fair amount of self-hypnosis in between the sessions or even just on its own. But, um, and, and I, I did specialized training to show you how to use that self-hypnosis uh, um, a lot more, you know, for people with severe trauma, um, yeah, do it. You know, it, it may be necessary to do some on your own. 
Um, so how do you think you're different now than before? So you've done three sessions. You've done a good chunk of self-hypnosis. Your first session, I think, how long ago was your first session? Uh, about a year and a half ago, roughly, I think. Okay, a year and a half ago. So how, how are you different now? Well, over time, I've slowly got less and less resistance towards doing certain things. Um, mm -hmm. I don't get that, you know, that, that feeling I used to get in my gut all the time, uh, that anxiety feeling. Mm -hmm. I don't, I still get it sometimes. I don't get it nearly as much as I used to. Is it down 90%, 50, 20? Well, yeah, probably like 70 or 80%. Okay, cool. Uh, overall. Uh, yeah. Cause I always had that, that, in, that anxious kind of energy attached to everything. Like, yeah, everything's and, and anxiety is our brain sensing potential threats and saying, yeah. Hey, this could, if this goes wrong, I'm going to feel bad emotionally. I'll feel shame or, you know, it could be physical threats, but that's more fear. And people who are anxious all the time grew up in, in environments where there were emotional threats everywhere. And that's what we're used to. That's what our brain perceives is going to happen is, hey, man, this could hurt. If this goes wrong, you're going to get scolded here. You're going to get shamed here. You're just going to straight up feel bad here if you don't do this or you do it wrong. And um, people with anxiety, a lot of anxiety, they grew up in environments with a lot of potential threats, especially toxic shame threats, you know, criticism, ridicule, embarrassment, growing up in an environment with a lot of threats, a lot of unpredictable threats, they can make us feel bad, feel toxic shame, or just straight up abuse, those types of threats. Um, you're as an adult, you're just gonna have tons of anxiety all the time. So that's down about 70 80%. Um, is there anything yeah. good to replace the negative programs or is it just the negative programs and negative feelings, et cetera, way lower? What's going on there? Well, that's an interesting question. Yeah. I, you know, I do think that there has been some more positive stuff um, added in to replace it. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we focus a lot on that in this, right? So yeah, it's uh, I have a little bit more sense of self-worth and, you know, okay, I can solve problems, you know, um, and that's type some of the stuff we're trying to get in there deliberately, right? So it is working that way. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so if have you have you tried like normal therapy, CBT therapy, or any other type, just the well, normal shrink? Yeah. Well, I mean, I've done I've done a lot of CBT in the past. I did DBT. Um, what's what's DBT? Dialectical behavioral therapy. Oh, okay. I believe D it was a while ago. Yeah. 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 And it. Uh, and that's some of that stuff, like, I'm not going to say it wasn't helpful, but it's not, it doesn't address the core issue. It's like for, with stuff, like for me, I was too severe. Like I had to go into the core and. Yeah. Yeah. And pull how, stuff how is this much. different than that? Did, did, do what we do, the self hypnosis, et cetera, does that address the core issue? Or you, yeah, I would say it. Uh, well, cause we're, you're working directly with the subconscious, right? Yeah. We go straight to the core. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. What are what are some of the other positives um, you've noticed? You say you feel a little more self worth. Uh, anything else? Um, well, yeah, like I more self worth, less anxiety. Um, things have a little bit more color to them. I don't feel as bleak. I'm not as depressed. Um, I've been able to, re like you, I was able to remove. Well, I don't know if remove is the way, way to say it, but you know what I mean? I was able to Repro reduce my program or whatever. Yeah. I was, I was able to reduce my depression a, a good deal prior okay. to doing any kind of hypnosis. It was still there though. Anxiety couldn't do any CBT and stuff like that. Didn't do much of anything for my anxiety. Yeah. It's weird for me too. fix like 60% of my depression. Um, rage just helped a little anxiety, not at all. Yeah. So yeah. this is the only thing that seems to make a substantial difference for for the anxiety end of things yeah cool. so i would say that's the biggest change that i've noticed anxiety way down but not completely cured now for our yeah. audience um you'll never get your anxiety to zero because anxiety is part of our fight or flight response so my anxiety is maybe 95 percent down but that five percent is supposed to be there uh, mm -hmm. meaning when our brain does sense threats um our emotions are conveying information from our subconscious mind to us. So we're not going to make it so that you're never sad at all or that you're never anxious at all. But all the maladaptive anxieties, you're going to have it so your anxiety is now serving you. Meaning 
um, we can get you to a point that when you are anxious, you should actually pay attention because your subconscious is telling you about a real threat. And, and I've had times in my life where I was feeling anxious and I'm like, why am I feeling anxious? I've cured all my trauma. You know, what's going on there? And then I think about it. I'm like, well, my client wants, this is back when I was setting up trust in LLCs, which I still do a little, um, but I'm like mostly, you know, helping people like you, Ryan, now. Um, I, yeah, I had this time like that and I feel anxiety. It's like, well, I don't have any trauma left, you know, um, or that's what I told myself. And I thought about it and I'm like, you know what my client, what my client is asking me to do is actually dangerous. It could blow up in her face. So you shouldn't do it. <laughs> and my anxiety was actually telling me, no, really don't do this. You know, it's, it's not like, um, don't, don't go up and talk to that cute girl when really you should, you know, it was actually, no, you shouldn't do this. It's not safe. So um, there are times when we're still going to have some negative emotions because um, there's still times to get like I rarely get pissed off at people unless they're really screwing with me, in which case, you know, I'll enforce boundaries. And then if, you know, if and then if they're just being a jerk about it, yeah, I'll get a little pissed. So we won't cure all of that, but we get it to where it's serving us, not working against us, not holding us back, not keeping us paralyzed. Um and so if you were, if someone else, uh, what would you want or your, what would you want the audience today listening? Maybe someone who's where you used to be and you're not, you're not done with your recovery. You know, I think it's safe to say you've made some really good progress. Is that correct? Yeah, I made some great progress, but I'm nowhere close to finished. I mean, yeah, you I, still I got, got more ways to go. Yeah, I do. And that's okay, man. But, um, you know, you did the CBT, DBT. Um, you say it didn't work. This is actually really helping you. Well, um, I, wouldn't, and I wouldn't go as far as to say it didn't work at all. It just wasn't enough. Like, it's like, yeah, it helped with the depression. That's right. I'm that's sorry. Like, that's like throwing a grenade at the problem. This is like the nuclear powered option, as you, I've heard you put it that way, right? Like, yeah, like or surgery. It's like the psychic thing. surgery. Yeah. I say that too. Yeah. Cause you actually find the negative beliefs and trauma and feelings you go in and you, and you get it out. Mm -hmm. Um, so if, is there anything you'd like to say to someone who is now where you used to be or someone else struggling? Um, what would you tell them about, um, this, this method or your recovery or any, any helpful advice you can get them? What would you say? Well, I, I mean, I guess I would say like, if you've got that like severe kind of internal trauma, I guess we'd call it like, especially if it's like, the, you know, if you've got like a multi-layered kind of issue with a lot of people do where you've just got so much stuff packed in there, like you're not gonna, you're probably, there's no other way that I know of that where you can really remove, remove all that stuff. Like, so I would focus on, I would definitely give this a shot. Like it, it should at least work. try the free stuff, man. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Like you've got the free, free stuff training. helped you too. Yeah, I did. You need, you needed some more intensive stuff, but yeah. even the, the free self hypnosis made you feel lighter. Well, could with, do more. Go ahead. With, with the, the free health self hypnosis that uh, Ryan put out recently is like the audio you get in there is much more powerful than the audio I had. Or probably anything, Ryan himself. Yeah, I've been had. making improvements. Yeah. Yeah. So it's much more powerful. Well, there's better guidance. training. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's much much improved to what I had. Or so, and I was able to even just with that, you know, with my level of of uh, issues, I was able to make some good progress even just with that. So I would start by checking out the free training, and then if you need more, you if you get need, it there. It's in the classroom section. Once you join, click the classroom tab and just start going through it. Yeah. But if you are super severe, like like what I was or or what you are, you probably will need more help. But there's a full program available that's like, you know, it's got all the free, the same as the free stuff, plus way more. Yeah, and, and it, I I do stuff I consider to be very very powerful, very very helpful to people. But you know, I have I have people come to me and they've taken certain psychedelics, and you know, again, I don't do any of those. You know, contact your medical provider, mm -hmm. etc. Um, but Hey, some people, um, my stuff really helps them and they do psychedelics and that helps them in a different way. You know, um, uh, EMDR can be very helpful. And there are times where normal cognitive behavioral therapy does help, uh, to an extent as well as well. I would never discourage anyone from that, you know? So, um, 
what I like about you, Ryan, is you have the willingness to try. And um, what I found as a key to success for me is, hey, if you try 10 things and nine don't work, and then the 10th thing does, well, guess what? You wouldn't have found that 10th thing that actually worked and now you're better if you didn't go through the nine that didn't work, if you didn't try. So um, I searched for years and years. I finally found this methodology and it massively helped me. Um, and I, I did 15 years of therapy first. This cleared away all the stuff that therapy couldn't get, which was a lot. Um, but um, congrats to you for having the courage to do this. And I, I would say keep going and, and even look at um, other methods. They, they may help you in additional ways. But it is my honor and pleasure to help you because I know this has helped you quite a bit. Correct me oh, if yeah. I'm wrong. But at the well, same time, I know there's um, more work to do. And, hey, we're, we're going to get there, man. Well, you know, one thing I'd like to bring up sure. um, is that, like, I don't have a, I have a little bit of anxiety doing this video right now because I'm not used to doing videos, right? Yeah, how so much was it before, that, right? Before, it was like a 10. Like, when I was in webinars and stuff like that, I couldn't even talk. Yeah, now it's like I felt like 10. my anxiety is like a 2 right now. And, and dude, that is yeah. freaking massive. Well, at one point, I wouldn't have been. I don't even know if I'd be able to do a video like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is kind of like a personal um, victory for you, right? Just even being yeah. able to do this. Man. I think so. Yeah. Two out of ten instead of ten out of ten. So I remember you telling me like I wanted to ask you in a question in the webinar, but you were too paralyzed. Is that? Was it? Yeah, I just didn't know. I, I just didn't know how to put myself out there. It felt like such a big thing to just put myself out there, and I didn't understand why yeah. I was like that. And a lot of people don't have that problem and they, and it's not a good problem to have because you don't learn the no. same, like you don't learn the <laughs> same amount when you don't put yourself out there. Yeah, man. So, um, keep up the good work. Keep trying hard. You, you had the courage to go inward and, and try new things until you found something to work. And I know you got more work ahead of you, but dude, you're getting there. You're absolutely getting there. Going from 10 out of 10 anxiety normally like a year and a half ago, you would have had 10, 10 out of 10 doing this interview. Now it's two out of 10. That's freaking huge. So mm -hmm. um, just keep going, brother. Proud of you. So anything else you'd like to add, Ryan? Well, if you're, if you're stuck, you got to get unstuck, right? So I just give it a shot. Like you might as well. Uh, these options, most people don't really have access to this type of stuff, right? Like you have to find it. Like this is actually a pretty obscure little... Yeah, I'm trying to take it network. bigger, like, but I'm still we're still small. All right, keep keep moving forward. And guys listening, um, you really do have more power than you know. Just give it a shot and then just commit to investing in yourself and getting better because you absolutely can. You know, Ryan, you were paralyzed with anxiety and now it's mm -hmm. way down. More work to go, but massive progress. So proud of you. And guys, just give it a shot. You really do have more. Oh, I got to line this up correctly. Power, then, you know.